Hi, this is Nita here with Hero Smart Homeschool Academy. Welcome to TOS Friday. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 18, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, element two. In the past, we talked about the first element, which was the mercy of God. Today we're going to be talking about the second element, which is the grace of God. If you're ready to begin, let's start with the word of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, all our hearts and to others' love we show. Pleasing you is our goal. Now to our lesson, we shall go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, it's so good to have you here. Hi. Welcome aboard. We have been talking, we've talked in the past about the first element of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, do you remember what that is? The law, yeah, you just hear laws, like law, law. There are laws in Christianity. Yay! Bless God forevermore. There are laws that we um, we abide by because God is a law creating person. He creates laws and systems, and life just wouldn't function without laws. Uh, not even not in the natural, not in the spiritual. Things would just collapse. You know, imagine if the law of gravity stopped working today. We'd all just start floating up and just bumping into each other and and we wouldn't be able to eat or drink or swallow food or it'd be bad or what if you know the law of electricity just stopped working yeah there would be no lights and there'd be no artificial light you know or what if you know all these different laws you know <laughs> what if the law of seed time and harvest just stopped working we've talked about the law of seed time and harvest you know you sow a seed and you can expect to reap a harvest well if we just if it just stopped working then we'd sow seeds and nothing would happen, you know, or maybe the seeds would all malfunction. Maybe you plant an apple seed and instead of an apple tree, you get, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a grapevine or something. You know, I don't, you know, it would be confusing. So God is, uh, he creates laws and systems to keep things in order because he's a God of order and he's very organized and very orderly and clean and perfect. And, um, so there are laws even in Christianity, and we've talked about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which is a set of principles, or you can say some rules that um, that are in operation whenever we get inside Christ Jesus. One of those rules, or one of those principles, is uh, is mercy. We've talked about mercy. We've talked about you know how to give mercy, how to receive mercy from God. If you want more mercy from God, how to get even more mercy from God by being merciful to others. The more merciful you are to others, the more mercy you receive from God. You can only get that by being inside Christ Jesus. Well, in the same way, believers and Christians who are connected to Jesus Christ, because he's the vine and we're the branches, and we get that water of life inside our spirits, which help us to look like Jesus which is very important because without that water of life, we would not be able to look like Jesus. We, we'd look like other entities. So thankfully, we're able to look like Jesus by being connected to him and receiving the same energy that he has. We, we, can, we have access to. We call that the grace of God, which we're going to talk about today. So the second element of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, or the second rule or second um principle that we have access to by being inside Christ Jesus is the grace of God. And the grace, which we may have heard a lot about in, in past times, is actually spiritual energy that we get inside our inside our spirits, inside our recreated human spirits, that will allow us. It's almost like fuel, you know, it's fuel that goes into our spirits to help us to um, to be pleasing to God and to overcome sin. And you learned about grace in week two, virtue. Oh, we talked about it as one of our virtues. We said grace is, grace of God helps us to overcome sin. It's this energy we need to overcome sin. Energy we need to overcome sin. Do you remember that chant? Yes, we chanted that a couple of times. Energy we need to overcome sin. Well, we get that energy only through Jesus Christ. Outside of the Lord Jesus, we can do nothing at all. Nothing. No good work. So we need to be connected to him. And so that's what we're talking about today is the grace of God that comes through 
being connected to God through Jesus Christ. And whenever we're connected to Jesus, what do we get? We get spiritual energy in the form of grace. Um, we talked about the mercy of God, which uses the same substance, just has a different purpose. So you have mercy and you have grace going into our recreated human spirits, giving us um, different things that we need. Mercy will help us to... Um, temp it will, it'll help us do a few things, but ultimately it'll help us to obey God. And grace will ultimately help us to obey God. And um, so we give thanks to God for that. The ultimate goal of of these favors and these these two, grace and mercy, the purpose is to obey God. Um, so yeah, the life of God is responsible for helping us to um, to be godly. And to be godly means that you have traits or qualities in your in yourself that resemble that of God Himself. So God says, "I'm merciful." And he says, "I'm merciful, just like my Father." God says, "I'm compassionate," and you could say, "I'm compassionate too." God says, "I'm a righteous judge." You could say, "I can make uh, quality judgments based on God's law, based on His character. I can do that too." God says, you know, I'm generous. You can say, I'm generous. Praise God. God says, I'm faithful. You can say, I'm faithful too. It's because you have the exact same substance going into your spirit as God himself has. And it helps us to look like God. Without which, if we take this out of the picture, ultimately, if we take Jesus out of the picture, then who, who will we look like? Will we look like Jesus? No. And we see that every time when we go out into the world and you see people and they behave certain ways or they say things or they do things, you think, well, mommy, you know, why did they say that? Why did they do that? It's because they don't look like Jesus. And it's not that they don't want to. It's that they're not connected to Jesus Christ. And if you're not connected to Jesus Christ, do you get that fuel in your spirit? And without that spiritual energy we call grace of God, you just can't do it. It's a, It's an impossibility. So we like to stay connected to Jesus Christ, don't we? So that we can get the spiritual energy we need to obey God. Um, also, just as an example, something I hope to stay with you is you can think of the grace of God inside Christ Jesus going to us, flowing into our spirits, much like a gas pump. Have you ever gone to the gas station with mommy and daddy? And have you ever seen them take the handle and they plug it into the car and they start pumping, you know? In the exact same way, the grace of God is plugged into us through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our, is the, the mediator. He's the connection. And once we get connected to Jesus Christ, just like that pump goes into the car and starts letting in all of his fluids to give the car energy, the grace of God goes into us to give us energy. Energy to do what? Well, the car needs fuel so it can go. <laughs> We need energy so we can go too. But what are we trying to go? We're trying to be obedient to God and please God so that we can go to heaven and be with him forever. So um, look for opportunities to ask God for grace if you haven't already. Dear God, please give me grace in my spirit today. And in the future, we're going to talk about ways you can attract the grace of God. The same way we we've talked in the past about ways we can attract the mercy of God. We say if we want mercy, we just need to show mercy to others. Look for opportunities to show mercy. Someone says, Nana, boo-boo. You say, you know what? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I want God's mercy in my life. So instead, I'm just going to, God bless you. Um, but, and we're going to talk about different ways we can attract. And we've also talked about being honest. We said if you want to attract more of God's mercy, just be honest. I did it. I'm wrong. If you made a mistake, you want to be honest enough to admit that. Keeping our hearts good. Because the qualities that God is uh, are look, he's looking for in our hearts are honesty, humility, and faith. Honesty is there. So you always want to be honest. You always want to be open and transparent with God. Don't hide anything from God because you can't. Even if you want it to, you can't hide anything from God. He has access to everything about you. Your actions, of course. Your words, of course. Your thoughts. Your heart. He has access to everything because he created you and he he has access to, <laughs> to everything. Right? So you may as well be transparent and honest with him and honest with yourself and honest with others. And next week, I believe we're going to talk about how to stay open 
or how to attract the grace of God. The same way we've talked about how to get more mercy in the past weeks. We're going to talk about how to get more grace from God. And we'll talk about that very soon. If you have your worksheet, you may pull it out at this time. And um, the worksheet is talking about how to get energy from food. And it compares getting energy from food to getting energy from the life of God, which we call Zoe, the life of God. Looks like that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming to class and for learning about the grace of God, spiritual energy to overcome sin and to be pleasing to God ultimately. Thank you so much for coming. And until next time, God bless. I'll be your hero's body and as you study with hero's body.